Hello everyone! Welcome to another lesson in Theory of Structure. So by the way, to those who are new in this channel, I am Engineer J. I am a civil engineer and I am also currently teaching as an engineering professor. And we have this new topic in Theory of Structure. This is one of energy methods in computing for the rotation and deflection of structure we have this Castigliano second theorem. So this is similar with a virtual work system. However, the only difference is that we do not need to draw a virtual or imaginary system. In Castigliano second theorem, instead of we put a one unit load or a one unit couple load to, to the point in which we are asked to compute the deflection or rotation, we instead put a, a constant load P. And then, when we have the moment equation, which is um, in terms of P, we apply derivatives. Okay? So, but before that, let's know uh, further about Castigliano Second Theorem. Now, Castigliano Second Theorem was presented by Alberto Castigliano in 1873, and this states that for linearly elastic structures, the Partial derivatives of the strain energy with respect to an applied force or couple is equal to the displacement or rotation of the force or couple along its line of action. So we will be using this general equation in computing for the deflection and rotation. For deflection, we just need to integrate or the integration of the partial derivative of moment equation with respect to the partial derivative of P times moment equation over the flexural rigidity dx from 0 to L, okay? And then for rotation, we just need to integrate the partial derivative of M with respect to the partial derivative of barred M times um, the moment equation over the flexural rigidity dx from 0 to L. So basically, um, this is similar with virtual work system and the only difference is that um, we have to integrate, okay? And we have to know the boundary. So this is the same as with the virtual work system, but the only difference is that we we integrate or we, we differentiate the moment equation because again, our moment equation here is expressed in terms of P variable, okay? So we need to eliminate P by differentiating it with respect to the variable itself okay so let's try to solve problem in order for us to further understand the Castigliano second theorem and then we have this first example here so we have this overhang beam in which we have a 30 kilonewton per meter um, uniformly distributed load that runs from A to B and a 55 kilonewton uh, which acts at point C. So we are asked to compute the deflection at C. So the first thing we do is we put a, a P load at point of concern. But since we are asked to compute the deflection at C, so we will be using a P load or we will be putting a P load at point C. However, guys, we have 55 kilonewton at point C. So therefore, we change this 55 kilonewton here to P. So we change that as P and that P is equal to 55 kilonewton. Uh, and then we compute for the reaction. So we compute for the reaction at A and the reaction at B. So we have R, A, Y and R, B, Y. So we can sum up moment at A to compute R, B, Y first and this equals to zero. Counterclockwise moments are positive. So we have RBY times 9 minus we have 30 times 9 times 9 over 2 then we have minus P times 12 is equal to 0 so we have RBY here which is equal to 4 P over 3 plus 135 Okay, so this is our, our RBY. Now, we can we can compute RAY here by summing up forces vertical is equal to zero. So, upward forces are positive. So, we have RAY plus RBY minus 30 times 9 minus P is equal to zero. So, we have 
ray now we already know the value of rby which is 4p over 3 plus 135 minus 270 minus p is equal to 0 so we can now compute ray here which is equal to minus p over 3 plus 135 so this is our ray and then we have to divide the structures into segments but since we have our beam discontinuous at B so therefore we can um, say this as our first member AB which has a boundary now if we let our X here from A let's say that's our X so our boundary here is from 0 to 9 okay and we also have uh, a member BC. Now, if we change our reference and we let our X here from C, so our boundary here is from 0 to 3. Now, you can also use X here always from A. So, it depends on you. So, the only thing that matters here is the boundary. Now, since we have um, already computed the reaction, so we can now proceed to the um, to the moment equation so we can um, generate moment equation here by dividing this or by cutting this at any point so we can now um, start at um, section a b so let's say this is our section a b so we can draw the free body diagram which we have here now we have already computed the reaction r a y which is negative p over 3 plus 135 correct this is our r a y and then we have of course the uniformly distributed load which is 30 kilonewton meters and then we have the internal forces of course that's we have moment a b and we have the length of our beam which is x so we can now sum up moment at a b is equal to zero counterclockwise positive so we have r a y times the moment arm x this is negative since this rotates clockwise opposite opposite of our assumed positive direction when we have plus 30 times x times the moment arm x over 2 then of course we have um, the moment or at cross section we have MAB and this equals to zero so therefore our MAB here is equal to RAYX minus 15X squared but we have already known the value of RAY and that is we have negative P over 3 plus 135 and this is multiplied by X minus 15X squared so this is now our moment a b okay so we tabulate that in our tables we have moment a b is equal to negative p over 3 plus 135 x minus 15 x squared and then we cut at section b c okay so we have here um we have this free body diagram we have the p which is acting downward and we have also the moment let's say we have positive moment here we have m b c and a positive internal shear we have v okay and we know that the distance is x so therefore um, we have to compute for m b c here which is summation of moment b c is equal to zero counterclockwise positive so we have here negative m b c minus px and this equals to zero so we have mbc is equal to negative px so this is now the moment equation for member bc so we have here negative uh, px so we can now um, compute the derivative of the moment with respect to the partial derivative of p Okay, so um, we compute for the derivative of moment at AB. So we have to we have the answer. Now, if we in derive this one in terms of P, so we let um, all variable X as constant. Okay, so therefore, we if we derive um, 
variable x with respect to p that means this equals to zero so therefore for this moment equation we have the derivative which is negative x over 3 okay that means if we um, derive negative uh, p 3x plus 1 3 5x minus 15x squared with respect to p this would give us negative x over 3 and all of these are 0. Now for the second moment equation we have um, the derivative of negative px with respect to p is equal to of course that is negative x. So and then we compute for the deformation for each segment so we can use the formula deformation is equal to the integration of the partial derivative of moment with respect to the partial derivative of p times the moment equation dx over ei we have the limit from let's say x1 to x2 so we begin at a b so we have the partial derivative is negative x over 3 times the moment is we have negative p over 3 plus 1 3 5 x minus 15 x squared so we put a bracket okay and this is dx over ei now we can take the value of p back to the equation now we know that p is 55 kilonewton correct so we can substitute p equals to 55 and we take 1 over ei here outside of our integration so we have 1 over ei but don't forget the limit now since our boundary is from 0 to 9 so we have the limit from 0 to 9 so we have 1 over ei the integration of negative x over 3 times negative 55 over 3 plus 1 35x minus 15x squared dx limit from 0 to 9 so by using your calculator you can directly compute the um, the deformation which is in terms of flexural rigidity ei that is we have negative 1248.75 the unit is in kilonewton cubic meter over ei and then for bc we have the integration of the partial derivative of m with respect to derivative of p which is of course we have negative x times negative px dx the limit is from 0 to 3 okay so we take um the, the original value of p which is 55 then we have here 0 to 3 negative x times negative 55 x dx and that would give us the answer now again we have 1 over ei outside of the integration because as we all know we have the flexural rigidity on the denominator so we have the answer 495 over EI. So we have 495 over EI. And then you add this deformation. So we have negative 1 to 48.75 plus 495. This would give us negative 753.75 over EI. So our deformation here is in terms of negative 753.75 over ei but since we have negative value that means our assumption that our p is downward is actually incorrect so therefore our p here should be or the correct direction of p here should be upward okay and that upward direction of p constitute that the direction of our deformation is upward as well so therefore we have our deformation which is going upward or which is um, acting upward now we have the true value of deformation now the unit of numerator is in terms of kilonewton cubic meter so we have the value or the exact value of our deformation which is equal to now we have 753.75 divided by the value of e is 200 gigapascal okay times the value of i we have 830 times 10 raised to the 6 millimeter to the fourth so we can just use 
830 here. So this would give us 4.54 um, times 10 raised to negative 3 and the unit is in meter. So therefore, we have the answer which is 4.54 millimeter and the direction is upward. So this is now the deflection at point C. Okay, so therefore, our beam would deflect like this one in which um, the length or the height of movement of C is equal to 4.54 mm. And that ends our example number one. Now let's, now in the second part of this discussion, I am going to solve example number two. So if you wish to watch or if you wish to continue the discussion on the Casigliano second theorem, I have posted the link in the description below. Thank you guys for watching, but please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.